at 6. So part B of 6 should be 6. We're adding 4. We have 10. We have 14. We have 18. We're looking at putting the first, find the first five terms. Oops, that's up here. So we should have 6. Add 4, we get 10. Add another 4, we have 14. We have 18. We have 22. And we could keep going. Those would be my first five. And I look at number 2. The next thing we are looking at is writing it in a recursive formula. What is our first term? First term, a to the 1 equals 6. a to the n. Oh, I started with, and when I'm looking at that, I'm going to have maybe a to the n minus 1, and my common difference is plus 4. 3b and c. 3b asks you to just graph the points. So when you think of your first one was 7, and then you were subtracting 2. So you should have had 7, 5, 3, 1, negative 1. That means for the first term, the first term is 1, 7. You go to 1, 7. The next one is 2, 5. Two, five. And you're going to continue with three at three. So that if we were looking at this, it then says after we graph that for B, what is the common difference? Well, the common difference is the same as the common difference here. The common difference, how is this changing? Our slope is negative two or negative 2 over 1, however you wanted to write that. That is our common difference as we look at that. Number 10, as you were looking at number 10, they were telling us that we needed to write the recursive formula. Where do we start off in number 10? What's our first one? We start with, because we're talking about dishwasher detergent, they use D sub 1. We started at 90. We use 4 ounces. What does that look like in my equation? Raise your hand. What does that look like in my equation? Do you want to tell us what we have in number 10? What do you got, Tanya? B sub n is equal. Keep going. Minus 4. We're subtracting 4 each time. We're using 4 ounces. You like that? Good. Good snack after lunch. Okay. Then it says, well, what's your 10th term, right? So if we are trying to find the 10th one, anyone have any ideas over finding our 10th one in this case? We could write each one out, right? We got at 1, we had 90, right? At 2, we're going to have 86. But that takes a lot of time, and we want to do that. We know our rate of change, so anyone have a way that they could find that one quicker than that? What'd you do, Otto? Uh, 90 minus 4 times 10. 90 minus 4 times 10. So we're almost thinking about it in slope-intercept form, right? Should it be times 10 then, or should we go with 9? Should we have 90 minus 40? That's going to be if we were looking at our, what did they ask us to find? Our 10th term there when we were looking at that. So we should have, so if we are looking at the evening of the 10th, we should have 50 for our solution, right? Okay? So that would be a quick, easy way. So it's not really using that recursive formula. It's more using what we're going to be um, working with today, which is explicit. Okay, so today the homework quiz is going to be asking you to write a recursive one and then to figure out something just like that one. It's going to be kind of a story time. If we look at 11, in number 11, they are telling us that um, we have this empty jar that we are working with and Each day we add 30 cents change from our bus fare at the start. How much change is in the jar? So at the start there was what? Was there anything there? So that would be zero, right? 
to start and the charge was zero dollar. Right? Write a recursive formula for how much is changing. A to the one, D to the one, whatever you want to use, C for cost. We started out our first day, we had zero. What happens after that? A to the n minus one. And then what are we doing each time? Raise your hand. What should we be doing, Otto? Adding 30 cents. We should be adding 30 cents. Plus, and we might want to put point three or instead of three. Okay. So as we are finishing those, make sure you're checking your answers in the back. Okay. We want to go on to 11. And so as you are looking at 11, our key thing again, look, make sure you kind of are reading through and going back over your notes and those explicit formulas um, and what the I can statements are that we were looking at for each unit. And in this case, what we want to take a look at is that explicit formula is really just a function rule, okay? So keeping in mind this is a function rule, it relates each term in the sequence to the term number. Whereas recursive is always talking about our first term and the common difference. Common difference, when it was in slope-intercept form, is really our slope, right? Anytime we're referring to a common difference, that common difference really is the slope when our equation is in slope intercept form. So as we're looking at these equations, the key thing is make sure you have that right behind there. For common difference, it's the same as our slope. Okay. As you are looking down at that next part in your notes, okay, so common difference is our slope. These are the two. We did recursive very heavy yesterday. Today we're going to look at explicit. So it says, when we are looking at this, if we have this linear function, y equals 4x minus 5, this is the table of values. So if we look at this table of values, does that make sense? When x is 1, do we get negative 1? 4 minus 5 gives us negative 1. If I would have asked you for your zero term, what would our zero term be of x? My y-intercept should have been what? In this equation. Y-intercept, raise your hand, should be what? Answer should be negative 5. At 0, we're at negative 5, right? So when we look at that one at 0, negative 5, if we are looking at that, right? So we now want to rewrite it in sequence notation. Is that kind of okay? So if we're looking at sequence notation, as we look at that, our sequence notation is going to be a to the n. And it's going to look very similar. It's going to be 4 to the n minus so it says all linear functions can be rewritten as arithmetic sequences. All linear function, it has to be linear, can be rewritten as an arithmetic sequence. Why can they be rewritten as an arithmetic sequence? Because they have a common addition or subtraction, right? So anytime we're adding or subtracting that same thing, that's really arithmetic sequence, it's a linear function. When we take a look at the domain of that linear function or the domain of our sequence, it is only the natural numbers. There are no fractions and decimals in that. And the reason why we have no fractions and decimals is we are talking about the natural numbers being term 1, term 2, term 3. We don't say what's term 2 and a half, what's term 3.14. We're asking each term, okay? It says explicit formulas can be written in slope-intercept form or point-slope form, okay? So slope-intercept or point-slope. When we started this unit, we started with slope-intercept, point-slope, and standard form, and we switched between those three. We are now going to switch between explicit and recursive the same way we did those ones. And it is important, and that's why I put on the daily planner today, that you look at the quizlet for going between those two and switching them back and forth. So it says, so if this is written in ex as an explicit formula, what does it look like as recursive? So the recursive, so this is our explicit formula, right, right here. My recursive formula is going to be like we did today. A to the 1 is, as we look up here, what is our first term? Raise your hand. What we got? First term was negative 1. Yes? Negative 1. Yes. Negative 1. I then have to write what for recursive? What's my next step that you had to do today? Raise your hand. What do we have? Oh, I A to the n equals a, or a n minus 1. 
minus a to the n minus sub n minus one, right? Okay. Previous term. This is really just saying the previous, right? Keep going. Remember back here, this is our difference. Times four. Or no. Plus four. Which one? Plus four. Plus four. Right? Because when we look at this, right, this is plus four. That is our common difference. Plus four. So this is going to be a plus four. And the key thing that you kind of want to keep in mind as you do these is that this common difference. When we look up here, that's my slope, and here, how we added, all of those are the same. So when I'm looking at an explicit formula and I have four times n, this is not going to be my first term, right? This is my zero term back here. This is the first of negative one, my common difference, so where those look at, okay? So we, yes, n. In this one, yes, we do. Thank you for reminding me because I have it in my notes and I just have not written it yet for n greater than one. And the question is, could I put greater or equal to two? You could use that one. I'm going to just get you in the habit of doing this one. I would take either one correct on the test. I wouldn't mark it wrong. You might find as you go forward in your mathematics that some teachers are going to be really picky as like the formula says this, but I would take either one. Okay, so. This one is asking you, as we take a look in the practice, which one does not describe an arithmetic sequence? And what I want you to do is I want you to put, so we're thinking about that common difference. I want you to put n, and then we're going to put a to the n. I want you to find the first three terms in each one. We're going to put n, and we're going to put b sub n. Again, find the first three. I do not want the zero term. I always want the first one. We're going to have n and c sub n. One, two, three. If you need your calculator, use your calculator, get it out. You're going to do these on your own. I'm not going to write every one down for you. And then d sub n. If I was starting with this first one, right, I put one to the third power. I have to cube it first. That's one minus six. I get negative five. I plug in two. Two to the third is eight. Eight minus six is two. I plug in 3. 3 to the third is? If you don't have a calculator, get one out so you can compute all these going down. Especially when you get over here, so if you that calculator might be helpful with the fraction part, but you might not need it. What do we have for our third term? Should have been 21. 27 minus 6 gives us the 21. Okay? So, do this next one. Be ready if I call on you to tell me your values that you get from B. So 1, 2, and 3. C, so 1, 2, and 3. 11, 15, 19. If we are looking at our C to the N, anyone have those values? How do go? So we have negative one, negative one third, and a positive one third. So if I'm looking at these first three sequences and I'm asked, is it arithmetic? Which really means, do we have a common difference, right? Am I adding the same thing or subtracting the same thing each time? Is what we're looking at, okay? Common difference. First one, yes or no? Definitely not, right? We're not adding the same thing each time. No common difference, right? So if I'm asking you to explain, you want to give me a reason, right? As I'm looking at this next one, what do you think, Becca? Um, the last one, um, wait, 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 let's do this one first. Does this one, is it an arithmetic sequence? Oh, um, yes. And our reason would be because we are doing what? Adding four. Common difference of four, right? Here our common difference is four. If we are looking at this, so Becky, you want to give me the last one that you have for one, two, and three? Uh, 
Negative one and I'm gonna go with negative one and one third. You said negative four thirds, same thing, right? Then you had negative ten thirds, or we could have had three and one third, right? Negative ten thirds, and then you add a negative sixteen thirds, negative five and one third. So I'm looking at these last two and I'm trying to decide is there is there a common difference each time? So if I am looking, thank you. Do we have a common difference as we are looking at those? Am I continually adding or subtracting Here, we are adding two-thirds of our common difference, right? How do I know that? It's also here. So is this one is a yes, and our reason, again, our common difference is adding two-thirds. So when I look at that last one, my common difference is, from where I started, my first term, I'm always subtracting two. Right? So is this one an arithmetic sequence, meaning we're continually adding or subtracting? Yes. And again, my common difference or my slope is negative 2. So negative 2 is the common difference. Okay. So the key thing, if it is going to be arithmetic, comes later, not for a while, but we'll come back to sequences, and we do geometric sequences, okay? So I don't think that's till like in January or something like that that we do. So at this point, we're all arithmetic because it deals with linear. So looking at these two pictures, I am going to ask you for similarities and differences like on a test. So if we are looking at comparing and contrasting these, it says we want to take a look at, as we look at these, we want to look at what is similar and what is different. What do you want to start with, similarities or differences? What's easier? Different or similar? Last class wanted to go differences, doesn't matter to me. Similarities. Similarities. Okay, so. How are they similar? What is the like about them? Don't give me one thing. They're the same slope. Same slope. Same slope, and in this case, it's going to be 4, right? Also going to be referred to when it's in our sequence as our common difference. What else is the same about them? Are they the same coordinates? Same coordinates. Same whole number coordinates, right? Same whole number coordinates. Like one, negative one, like two, three, right? Anything else similar about them? This is our what? Important in slope intercept, it is our same y intercept, right? Same y intercept or initial point. Is that same y intercept or initial point is at 0, negative 5. All right, so now let's think about their differences. So if we are looking at what is different about them, the first one is the linear one, what else could we say about it? What's from the last test? Remember one? Well, the one on the left can say yes and the one on the right is three. So the linear or the first one is continuous. Whereas the sequence, can sequences ever be continuous? Because we're only talking about whole numbers. 
the sequence will be discrete. So on the last test, you had to tell discrete or continuous. Do these both have the same domains, the line and this one? This one only has one, two, three, four, right? This one has all reals, right? Does that make sense? So the domains would also be different. The domain of the first one is going to be all real numbers. The difference is, so if we were looking at the other one, the domain of uh, the first is actually all reals, right? And our domain of the sequence is whole numbers. So it does say down below here that another name for arithmetic sequence is a linear sequence, okay? So when we are talking about those, and like I said, we'll get into the other sequences later this year, but right now at this point we're just concerned about the linear with our arithmetic. So here's some information. Find a formula for the nth term. The sequence goes 4, 11, 18, 25. If we are looking at that sequence, we want to find a common difference or the slope. Please do that right now on your paper and tell me what it is. And tell me how you found that right away, just looking at those. Keeping in mind that this is our first term, if we are looking at that. So we have our first term. This would be our second term, right? This would be the third term. This would be the fourth term. Tell me what is my slope. Does anyone have it already? What'd you get, Mary? Seven. seven. Positive seven, right? How'd you get it? Think of by seven. You just looked at the sequence and you noticed that you were adding, adding seven each time to get the next number, right? Easiest way to find slope. You don't have to do the y minus y over x minus x. So it says now we're going to pick the point 1, 4, and we are going to write in point slope form. So right above this, I want you to write point slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So really the only thing that we're not getting on is the standard form. But you've been, as we do sequences, you've been doing slope, you've been doing point slope, you've been doing slope intercept. So we keep going back. We want to replace the numbers 1 and 4, so tell me how would I be writing that, Devin, start me out. Y minus 4. Y minus 4 equals slope. Nope. Slope. Rate of change. 7. Okay. Times. Okay. Next thing it says is use n instead of x and use a sub n instead of y. So we want to make those two changes. Using n for x and a sub n for y. So right below that, make those changes. Okay. So we're going to have a sub n minus 4 equals 7 times, if we are looking at this, n minus 1. Is it starting to look like one of our sequence formulas? So if we were looking at that for our sequence formula, right? What do we have to do to get the a sub n by itself as you look up here? What am I going to do? Add 4. So if we're adding 4, yes? Okay. So if we are adding 4, please do that to both sides of your equation. But we don't want to distribute, and that's kind of where people think they should distribute. We want to leave it for a sub n is going to be equal to 7 times n minus 1 plus 4. When you look up at the sequence up above, the 4 was the what? First term. First term. What did we find the 7 to be up above? Slope. Common difference, the 7 out in front, okay? So when I am looking, the slope was out in front times n minus 1. Notice this is not n sub 1, right? 
They just put it in a parenthesis at minus 1. It says, could we also write this formula in slope-intercept form if we knew the initial value? Well, in slope-intercept form, we would have still had this formula looking like this for the sequence. It would have been 7 times n, right? But what would have been our initial term? Back at negative what? Negative 3. So it says we need to memorize these two forms. We're going to generalize the formula. These are the two you need to memorize. This is where I'd suggest going to the daily planner and taking a look at the difference between the two. This one's called a modified slope form. So when we think of what a modified slope is, this is our first term. Okay, Is that the same as this equation we have written here? Yes, they just switched the order. So could I have it this way also? Could I have d times n minus 1? You need to be writing. Some of you still aren't writing with us, okay? We're at this point. When I'm writing, you should write. If you don't have any of this written, start. Plus a sub 1. So you can switch this around if you want. d is always that common difference. Common difference than the initial one. So these two forms are pretty important as you are looking at those, okay? The starting and point slope lends itself very easily to this modified slope and slope intercept form of our sequence equations. Okay? So, as you read this question, it says in a concert hall, the first ten rows, or the first row has ten seats. Each subsequent row has two more seats than the row in front of it. The last row is 64. How many rows? That's what we're trying to figure out. Put down what you know. We know the first row has 10 seats. The difference, each row as we go back, is 2. We're trying to find when there are 64, a sub n, 64 seats. So start with what you know, plug in the numbers, into the explicit formula. So notice we start with that explicit formula. We'll use the point-slope version since we don't know the zero term. So when you don't know the zero, you want to start with the n minus 1. So a to the n was 64 equals what was our first term? 10. Our common difference plus 2 times n minus 1. We're going to start with subtracting 10. We get 54 equals 2 times n minus 1. And at this point, we have two options to solve. One would be to do what? Um, what is it? Um, I want to solve for n. I need to know what n is. Divide by 2. I can divide both sides by 2 right away. Did anyone think distributive property? Okay, so both ways. Here we'd get 27, right? We'd get n minus 1. If we use distributive, you would have had 54 equals 2n minus 2. And you would have had to add 2, right? And get 56 equals 2n. Last step here is adding 1, 28. Last step here is divided by 2. Do we get the same answer? So it doesn't matter which way you did it, right? You use distributive, or at this point you divide both sides by 2. So this was our question. This is what we didn't know. And now we have answered the question, and the question was how many rows in the concert hall? There are 28 rows. Okay. And this work was the work that I would need to see for how you got that answer, right? You'd substitute it into those formulas. All right, so let's take a look at this next one. What they are asking you to do is kind of like yesterday. Which one is the formula for the below is the explicit formula for the sequence? And the ones that are not, what I want you to think is why not? Okay, so you want to tell me the why part. Like why is the one that is the explicit one and which the ones that are not? So if you are looking, I want you to kind of think with your shoulder partner right now. And just think, which one is the explicit formula for it, and what are we missing? So I want you to talk about that right now with your shoulder partner, 
that we're going to do it together as a people. Is the first one explicit? Is that the one? Yes. Start point, right, is negative 5. That's our first. And we are adding 10. So when I look at the other ones for why it's not, this one, this is not my first term, right? And it's actually not the zero term either, right? So it's not the first term or the zero term. And we are not subtracting 10, right? We're not minusing 10. This is tell us to subtract 10, right? How about this one? What's wrong with this one? Do we have the right first term? Yeah. What's wrong with it is, again, we are not subtracting, not minusing 10. We were adding 10. Each time there was an addition of 10. And then back here, they kind of switch those two around, right? So, and it still won't be the zero term, but we are not subtracting. This should be a plus 10 here. And this, if I was looking at the zero term, the zero should have been negative 15, right? Not 5. Okay? So looking at that, I want you to look at this one down below and decide with your shoulder partner which one for the pool is at 36, it drains at a rate of three inches, which one is gonna give us after n hours, okay? So just think about what we know. Where is our positive and negative as we are looking at this, okay? See if you both agree with the one. So which one makes sense if you are looking at it? Can we have the first one? Could it be A? No, because we're not losing 36 inches, right? Can it be B? No, because we're not starting at a negative 36 and adding 3. And we're not adding inches, right? We're not adding 3 each time. Okay, so it can't be B. Can it be C? No, because no. that's saying we start at negative 36 and then we're taking away, right? So it has to be D as we are looking at that one, right? So as you look at this one, it had to be D as we looked at that. And as you look at the top of the next page, okay, of your notes, it's asking you to look at this one. You decide to ride to run a half mile, we want to write that explicit and recursive formula for this, okay? So you plan to run a half a mile the first day and a tenth a mile after. What would our explicit formula, what's the common difference each day? What's our common difference each day? How much are we adding on, Brooke? One tenth of a mile. So. I start with a half a mile, right? So this would be my explicit formula. I then want to change it to recursive, okay? So if I'm looking at the recursive one, I want to think where I start. It's to the n minus one. And our common difference is still that one-tenth for n greater than one. Okay? I handed out the 11. Um, I will, we have a meeting tonight right after school, so I will not be here after school, but I will be in here tomorrow at 8 or in advisory, depending if you don't have, if your team, if you guys have a, can come down from team A1 if you need help or come at 8. And if you know you have early morning music or something, then maybe advisory is going to be your time. Um, so you're finishing this worksheet, and what I want you to do right now is we're going to just turn the worksheet to the very back where it has the answers. And just kind of turn it sideways. 